gosh, I don't know about you, but there are times where I get writing and and working long hours on the internet and creating oh posts or blogs or websites and and uh, you know sometimes commenting to people that ask questions and responding to them and you get to a place where you can answer at the time <laughs> whatever it is that somebody asks you but what's funny is because at some point in time you become mush <laughs> you become almost as though there's nothing left the sponge just went and <laughs> squished all its holy spirit wisdom and knowledge right out the window you know and you kind of go uh the the i'm lost that's the time that you reach for a devotional that's the time that you need to recharge your batteries those are the times that <laughs> you need some sugar <laughs> or an energy drink uh, but then you crash and you burn and you think, oh my gosh, am I better off for having drank the energy drink to get something done or should I have avoided it in the first place? To each his own. It won't kill you. Maybe. <laughs> but with, what will kill you is not knowing what's going to happen to you today. Not being prepared for what might be coming around the corner. And the way we prepare and the way we get ready is through devotionals. That could be through Bible readings, of course. That can be through a quick prayer like, God, take me there and, and get me out of here. <laughs> because God meets your needs because he's already understood ahead of time where you're at. Now, if you're sincere, those things work. If you're being honest, you know if you are. You know if you're scamming one on God and you think you're getting away with it because you're not. He knows you better than you do. Or if you're really sincere when you're saying, hey, you know, I'm just, I'm fried, God. I just can't do it anymore. And you run off and do your own thing for a while until you come back to him and he says, I'm still here. I like that relationship that I have with God. Because I used to say, if there was a way to screw up grace, I would have found it. And it's his mercy and his love that brought me to him in the first place and all my life anytime that i was far from him it was always his love not his condemnation or judgment that brought me back to him if there's anything that i could share with you it would be that to respond to his love while you have the time because there will come a time where there is God still loves, but he's reserved it so you won't see it during a time called the tribulation period that God forbid that you should be there. So now, being prepared for today, looking forward to the time that Jesus is coming, and knowing that we don't have it within ourselves, let's fill up, read up, and be blessed by what God may say to us through speak God I'm listening how about you what you're dealing with what is when you're dealing with what is <laughs> are you prepared to see Jesus uh, I think so maybe suppose just suppose that you knew the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was near Suppose that you had inside information that your time to occupy until he comes was about over. Suppose, just suppose, you knew for certain that by this time next year, you would be standing as an individual before your God and your Lord having to give an account of how you lived life as a child. Romans 14, 10, 12 and 2 Corinthians 5, 10. Would it make a difference in the way you live today, next month, during the coming year? Well, we don't know about the next year, but we do know that the Lord Jesus Christ will return someday. In the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, and from all that God's word has to say about the end times, from all that we see going on in our world, even now, today, 
and from the prompting of the Spirit of God, we feel that we need to order our days before our God accordingly. God has told us to redeem the time because the days are evil and to live as if his coming is imminent. And it is. And he has told us that we will be held accountable to him for the way we live as his children. Let me share with you just some of the things for which God's word tells us we shall be held accountable. We shall be held accountable for what we have been given, Matthew 25, 1-30. What we know, Luke 12, 4 through 48. Our stewardship of God's word, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5. What we teach others, James 3, 1, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. Our giving, Philippians 4, 14 through 17. Our words, <laughs> Matthew 12, 36 and 37. Our leadership, Hebrews 13, 17. Now, Follow this five-step plan as you look at the days ahead. <laughs> uh, first, go through this list, look up the scriptures, and ask God to search your heart in each area in the light of his word. Second, set some specific goals for your life. For instance, since you are accountable to God for knowing his will and for doing it, you need to plan how you are going to make the time to be alone with him in his word so that he can speak to you. Third, as you set these goals, formulate definite plans to reach them. For instance, to follow through on the example used above, making time to be alone with God, schedule your day to allow yourself uninterrupted time to be alone with him. Fourth, once you have set your goals and your plans, you need to begin. It has been said that it takes 21 days of repetition to form a habit. Therefore, determine that for the next 21 consecutive days, you are going to take time to be alone with God, in His Word, prayerfully, listening to the thoughts He will put into your heart and into your mind. As you spend this time, boy, what an emphasis, as you spend this time, bleh, spit it out. As you spend this time, Tell God you want only His thoughts and ask Him to make you aware of anything that is not truly from Him. Test everything by seeing if it is in agreement with the whole counsel of the Word of God. And fifth, begin examining every aspect of your life in the light of His coming. According to 1 John 3, 3 2 through 3, our anticipation of the coming of the Lord acts as a purifying hope in our lives. Therefore, the days ahead should become days of cleansing as we put away those things, sins, habits, weights, possessions, activities, excesses that keep us from pursuing His holiness. Hebrews 12, 1, 2, and 14. Suppose our time is shorter than we think. Someday, and it could be tomorrow or next year, the suppositions will be over. Jesus will appear. Then our opportunity to live the life of faith will be over. Someday will come like a thief in the night. Don't be caught unaware. Be ready and begin now. The discipline will pay eternal dividends. My beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 5-8. You know, I'm always amazed by how precise this word, word is that God always gives me through K. Arthur and how appropriately practical it has always been in order to really change my life or to make it more in line with what God seems to be doing and has done throughout the ages. But the point is, in our modern days, is do we really want to be God's people, or are we more likely to be God's church? In other words, on Sunday, you know, it's fine for people to be planned out and ready to go, because we know what time church starts. You get your worship in, you get your word in, you get the preacher in, you get your time in, you get out, and you go to lunch, you know, and you have your time, and you, bingo, we're done with God, and we go on our way. Then football season hits. Oops. Or some other 
circumstance that we want to spend time with. But you see, it's not a question of giving those things up that you like to do. The question is, are you willing to do those things that God wants you to do? Because, you see, nobody can sit here and say, oh, well, tomorrow I'm going to clean up my act and I'm going to, you know, be perfect. But it begins in a process of choosing to take some moment, sounds like a shameless plug coming on, some moment to go ahead and to seek the Lord and to ask Him each and every day what He wants. And you know, I can tell you this, I have never had God come up to me and say, give this up, do that, do this. Never. God has simply caused me to seek and want Him more than the thing that I desired to do at the time. Nine times out of ten, somebody like me, as honorary as I am, I went ahead and tried it anyways and did what I wanted to do. But you know what? Those things burned out. And I'm still a Christian. 35 plus years later, everything that I ever wanted to do, I did, and they weren't quite as wonderful as I thought they would be. Now, <laughs> I'm doing what I've always wanted to do and been doing. Talking about Jesus. <laughs> I can't think of anything more I wanted all my life. Lord, ah, if I could only be like those guys up there, you know, on the, on the pulpit, in the pews or whatever, you know. And now having worked behind the scenes and helped out so many different ministries, I laugh at such naive that I had in those days. Because God uses you however he wants to. And you begin to love what he does in you as you begin to walk with him each and every day. So take the five steps and try them. Rewind the video if you want to and check it out and figure out what it is. Or just ask God each and every day and he'll, he'll come up with a plan for you. But remember, do it his way and choose his plan. God bless you.